So I was reading the comments for my videos as you do and Huh. But anyway, on my Yamaha XG video, at least one and a half people replied saying that they might want to see how much better the card could be if I used SB Link. And uh, if you don't know, the Yamaha XG is a PCI card. And there's a little thing called SB Link, which is a little header on the board that connects to a compatible motherboard. And it's supposed to give it better compatibility uh, for DOS games. In fact, a lot of people say that it's pretty indistinguishable from just a regular ISA card at that point. But I couldn't test it at the time because I didn't have the right hardware. But that has changed actually, and I have the right hardware now. So I got this Dell Dimension XPS T600R. And you might be like, why didn't I just buy a motherboard instead of a whole computer? Well, it's less expensive, believe it or not, to just buy a whole computer as opposed to the motherboards that support SB Link. But that's fine. I got this thing for like a hundred bucks on eBay and I didn't really do anything with it yet. It's missing a hard drive and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, but I did peek inside and there's a graphics card with a 3DFX logo. So if that's anything to go by, my hundred bucks was well spent, even if the rest of this thing's kind of a piece of junk. So let's use this opportunity to clean up this old Dell and uh, get the Yamaha XG firmly seated into it and see if this SB Link thing is all it's cracked up to be. All right, so here's our machine here. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is get some of the yucky stuff cleaned off of it with some like soap and water before I open it up and show you what's inside. So let's just do that real quick. Ready, clean. All right, so it's not perfect. Uh, there's still some scuffs. I used a magic eraser to clean up most of it, but I've worked for the government long enough to know a good enough job when I see it. So let's get this thing opened up. Okay, so pretty basic looking inside. Of course, we have the Dell Shroud of Justice here that they always have. And let's start seeing what these cards are. So it looks like on the bottom here, uh, we got a controller card. Probably don't need to take that one out. Let's see what the sound card is. All right, so we got a PCI Sound Blaster of some sort here. These usually are just kind of okay. Next, it looks like we got a 3Com Ethernet uh, controller here. All right, let's see what this graphics card is. If I can get it off, because I'm an idiot. There we go. So looking this up, this is actually a Voodoo 3000 of some sort, uh, 16 megabyte variant. And I'm pretty excited about this actually because I don't have any Voodoo cards. I've always wanted to get one, but the price has kind of turned me off and getting it all in this package deal is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna put this card back in here and then we'll get to the sound card. So here she is in all her glory. This is the Yamaha XG again. So uh, if you see this little header, if I can get close enough here, this PC to PCI header. This is the part that we connect to the motherboard. I got these uh, connectors on Amazon. It's got an extra pin, but it should be fine. If you do have one of these and you don't wanna buy this, you can very easily just make your own cable of this, uh, but I think this looks nicer. Just gotta plug it in. Oh, actually, I'm gonna do it upside down because I'm a rebel. Let's do that. Just like that. So we plug that sound card in here. So there is the connector on the board. And we just have to plug this in, and in theory, it should just work. There we go. I think that's all we need to do to get it to work. So before I put this machine back together to simplify things, I decided to yoink out this PCI IDE controller. 
Whoever had this system before must have needed more hard drives or something, but I can just use the one on the board. We can hook up to like three of them with it, so I don't think we need this extra card. And while I was at it, I decided to install this Star Trek CF card reader so we can install our operating system. But before we do that, we need to see if it works. So let's plug it in and see if she posts. Okie dokie. So this is the part where we plug everything in and uh, it works the first time. All our drives are detected and then we just start installing Windows. That's, that's the way this always works. Hmm. Ooh. Ah. I think that's it. There we go. Just a loose cable. So here we are, everything is working. I did have to take it apart again because I didn't change the CMOS battery and I never plugged in the power for the uh, CF card reader, so I didn't have a drive. But everything is up and running now. There's a few interesting things here. So we have a Pentium 3 processor running at 600 megahertz. Also says we're running ECC RAM, or at least ECC is on. I'm gonna double check to see if it is ECC memory, but that's kind of interesting for a machine like this. But yeah, all our drives are detected now, so I think it's time to install Windows 98. All right, so I figured uh, you didn't need to see me install Windows 98. All you need to know is I installed Windows 98 and everything's working. But this of course is not Windows 98, this is DOS and there's a reason I have DOS up. So just in case you wanted to do this yourself, the best way to tell if SB-Link is working is to use the DOS utility. So first we're just gonna load the TSR uh, batch file and then let's load the setup DS. So as you can see here, it says the DMA mode is PC to PCI, and that's exactly what we want. That is SB-Link right there. You can change this uh, to use um, DDMA, which is what I was using before in the previous video, but PC to PCI or SB-Link works much better, as I will show you. It's still not perfect, but it definitely works much better than the other method. So if you're at this screen and you do the sound tests and all of these work, you have a working SB-Link connection. So before I play some games, um, I just want to tell you a few things that I needed to do to make this thing work. So first of all, at the beginning of the video, I actually plugged in the SB-Link cable wrong. I had it backwards. Actually, I'm gonna do it upside down because I'm a rebel. Thankfully, I just flipped it around and now everything is working. I also put the sound card in the first slot, which seems to work a little bit better as far as compatibility goes. But speaking of compatibility, it's pretty stinking awesome. There are some problems with some games as I'll get into, but most of the games that didn't work before are now working. So one of the games that didn't work before was Duke Nukem 3D. Now Duke Nukem 3D, in my experience, never really works well with PCI sound cards, but with SB-Link, it works absolutely perfectly and at the highest sound quality in 16-bit mode. So with this computer, plus the wavetable on this Yamaha card, and running it in 800 by 600, this is a really good way to play Duke Nukem 3D. Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. So here's yet another game that was not working before and is now working, which is Rise of the Triad. Everything now works perfectly with this one. This game's really cool. I gotta give it a chance sometime. I've never really actually played through more than the first level. So I'm not gonna load it, but Tyrion was another game that uh, didn't work before either and now works fine. So I'm gonna get onto the games that kind of have some issues now. So the first one that is notable to me is Jill of the Jungle. Now Jill of the Jungle is kind of a pain in the butt to get working on a lot of sound cards and ones that are sort of using dodgy emulation-y stuff doesn't usually work, but it, has a weird problem that I've never quite seen before. So when you first start the game, it works fine. Every sound in the game will only play once and then never again. So well, check this out. So there's the landing sound. Wait a second. There you go. Okay. Yep. 
it's not gonna work again. Now, I thought for a second that it was just gonna work. Yeah, it just plays for a little bit and then it stops working. Kind of unfortunate. I don't really know what would cause that if it's like some kind of weird like memory limitation or something. But Duke Nukem 2 has a very similar problem, which I'll show you here. Now with Duke Nukem before, it would play the intro and none of the voice or the machine gun sounds would work. And that's now working, but we have some other problems in game. So they work kind of, sort of like Jill. It, they work, but if you like make do too much of them, everything just gets cut off and it doesn't work. Not unplayable or anything. This is definitely better than Jill of the Jungle was, but it's still just, it's not quite right. That said, Duke Nukem 2, still an awesome game and doesn't play bad on here. It's definitely not the worst way to play it. So in conclusion, uh, this SB Link definitely does work. Whether it's worth tracking down all the parts, uh, that's kind of up to you. There's not a whole lot of motherboards that support this. And by the time Windows XP came along, uh, pretty much nobody was prioritizing putting this on boards. That said, I have heard a few people say in the previous video that you can find this connection on some Pentium 4 motherboards. So it might be kind of a decent option to add DOS compatibility to something sort of semi-modern, maybe run free DOS on it or something. That'd be pretty cool. But that's gonna wrap up this video today. I'd like to thank all of my members and patrons who support the channel monetarily, but also people who down below comment and correct me when I'm wrong all the time. I appreciate you guys. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.